A few years ago, I made a video series detailing what I thought were the worst games on the Atari 2600 at the time. I have since changed my views on some of those games, but not all of them, and I've come across other gems on the 2600. So I decided to make a new list. Today we will be looking at what I consider to be the top five games that graced, or in this case, disgraced, the excellent Atari 2600 game console. Number five, Pac-Man. Okay, while this may not be the worst game on the 2600, this butchered port does at least deserve a spot if only for the sheer stupidity surrounding it. There are several good arcade ports on the 2600, some from Atari themselves. However, this thing was just an attempt to cash in on the popularity of Pac-Man by releasing a game that clearly wasn't finished. Do you know what this game feels like? Feels like it was a test maze designed to test collision detection, which is probably what it was, and someone at Atari must have seen it and decided to release it, possibly the reasoning that people will buy anything related to Pac-Man. Oh, and they stupidly decided to make more Pac-Man cartridges than there were consoles at the time. You know you screwed up when the most successful game on your console was a commercial disaster. There's a reason the original Atari isn't around anymore. At number four, we have Snake. Here's one I've discussed before, and I still have a strong dislike for. Brought to us by the wonderful minds over at Data Age, this game consists only of a single screen, where you only move around a small area of the center, destroying groups of enemies by killing only one of them. Your reward? A single point, and the score counter resets once you get to 100. Did I mention that the game ends when you're hit only once? That's a good game design right there! At number 3, we have Warp Lock. Here's a game I discovered very recently, brought to us by the, by the minds at Data Age. Basically, this is Snake, set in space, and it somehow works. Like Snake, you only have one life and must shoot up enemies, destroying a whole group by destroying by killing one enemy. And let's not forget this annoying soundtrack. Between this, Snake, and Bugs, a game that was awful but not quite bad enough to be in the top five, Data Age is quickly becoming one of my least favorite developers for the Atari 2600. I should try and see if I can find more of these and see if any of them are as bad as these two. If anyone has any Data Age games for the 2600, feel free to send them my way, or actually, on second thought, just throw them in the nearest trash can or fire. That would be, that sounds like it'd be more fun than anything these guys can cook up. At number two, we have Firefly slash Sorcerer. Ah, Mythicon. One of the companies that showed firsthand what happens when a company loses all publishing control over their console. Now, Mythicon made three games Firefly, Sorcerer, and Star Fox. No connection at all to the Nintendo series. Now, Star Fox was awful, but not nearly as much as Firefly and Sorcerer. In Firefly, you play as what I assume is a Firefly that shoots enemies and destroys a group of two to three by killing one but and collecting objects, all while being subject to some of the worst movies I've ever heard. In Sorcerer, you play as a guy who runs around collect shooting groups of enemies and collecting objects. Hmm, I haven't been running into a lot of that with crap Atari games, haven't I? Now, don't source does now doesn't Sorcerer sound familiar? That's because it and Firefly are essentially the same game. Even down to the irritating soundtrack. I, I wish I could say that was it, but we're not done yet, are we? <laughs> nope. There's one more, and it's a game whose name I dread to speak. And the number one worst Atari 2600 game is... Karate! Ah, Karate. Perhaps the worst thing to ever be encased in an Atari 2600 cartridge. This is one of the earliest examples of a fighting game, back before they became good. Now, where do I begin with this abomination of interactive entertainment? First off, you are in a karate match and play as a mess of pixels, barely resembling human beings. The collision detection's messed up and makes it next to impossible to land a hit on your opponent, but your opponent seems to have no difficulty hitting you. Oh, and your opponent gets stronger every time you lose, destroying any sliver of a chance of winning. The only thing approaching decent here is the attention to detail, perhaps too much attention to detail, as many belt levels are seen going all the way from white to black. And the fight takes place on a map you would see at a karate tournament. 
However, the this attention to detail isn't surprising given that the game was designed by a karate master who for some reason decided to make a game on a console that only had one button. Fortunately, the original version of the game by Ultravision is one of the rarest 2600 games out there. Huh. Notice how many rare video games are crap? That, that might be because most of them end up in landfills all over the country or all over the planet. Unfortunately, the company Frogo picked it up a few years later and re-released it. So, if you feel like playing this for some reason, or want to send it to someone as a prank, something I definitely do not condone, get that version. If you want a good Atari 2600 fighting game, get Boxing by Activision. Now, that's all I had to say about this piece of junk. Karate, not boxing. And I hope to ne I never had to play this again. Now, if you like this, feel free to like and subscribe. Well, until next time, everyone. Tune in next time for a top five best Atari 2600 games.